I'm joined with Asaf Dillon from Quest Corp here at the Commodities Global Expo 2024 in Fort Lauderdale. Asaf, thanks for joining us. Hey, Steve. Thanks for having me. So uh, let's start off with gold. I mean, I assume that you're involved with gold companies, the gold industry. We're here at a mostly gold conference. Yes. I assume that you've got your own thesis on gold and why you like it. Um, yeah, you know what, Steve? Uh, thanks for asking. I think uh, um, you know, the name of the company actually is Quest Corp Mining Corp. And uh, we basically have signed an LOI with, uh, with another company based out of Vancouver, Riverside Resources. And the project that we've actually signed the option on is actually called La Union. Yep. It's a gold-focused project that's had... I gotta stop you right there because we've actually been to the Union project for our very first episode of DD on the go. So let me ask you, what is it about La Union that attracted you to it? Why are you excited about it? It's funny you say that because uh, that's one of the episodes that I've actually saw. I saw your trip with uh, John Mark Stoudy of Riverside down to the Union. Um, yeah, the project, uh, as you know, Steve, I think uh, it's got some great uh, historical, uh, um, uh, it's got a great history. It's got a great infrastructure, the regional uh, um, uh, infrastructure is in place. Mexico's a great place to do mining. We're actually right in the Sonora Belt. There's a number of very successful mines in production and assets that are being developed all within this region. So what's the plan for La Union in terms of exploration? Okay, well, uh, Steve, you know, it's a great question. We're actually, we've just announced that we've signed an LOI. We're going to probably come to a definitive agreement here in the next couple of weeks to 30 days. Uh, plans are to uh, uh, close a financing of not less than 1.5 million Canadian. And essentially, this project is drill ready. It's fully permitted. Um, so I think uh, as soon as we can raise this uh, uh, closest financing, I think we can hit the ground running right away. So what can you tell us about the current shareholder base? Any investors uh, worth noting? What can you tell us about the current share structure? It's a very tight structure. We only have 15 million shares issued and outstanding. There's probably only about 5 million in the retail float. Uh, management directors still own about 5 million shares. Uh, in, the, in the recent IPO uh, uh, round, we actually probably brought in another, uh, oh, uh, you know, half a dozen um, key strategic kind of investors. Uh, everybody's below still 10%, but as we grow the company, I think we'll see some of these investors reinvest as we're looking to grow and develop the asset. So you're also involved with another company, iMetal Resources. Uh, what's, what's the plan there? Yeah, you know, uh, uh, with iMetal, we actually just uh, completed a restructuring earlier this year. Our flagship property there is, is a project called Galganda West. This is in the Abitibi region, specifically in the Timmins camp. We announced a uh, successful discovery hole last year. It's basically, it's a, the hole is about 50 meters uh, of a gram of gold. 48 and a half actually of 0.85, and within that uh, 48 or 50 meters, we actually have a 20 meter intercept at roughly a gram and a half. Our plans there are gonna be, we'll be doing a, probably another small financing, 1.5 to 2 million range, and we think fairly quickly, our technical team thinks that uh, if we can double the amount of drilling which we've already completed, which is about 4,600 meters, I think fairly quickly if we can build on that discovery hole pretty quickly we could be sitting on three or four hundred thousand ounces of gold right next to a multi-million ounce deposit less than 750 meters away what's the deposit that's nearby uh we're basically we share a border with the uh, company that owns the juby deposit okay. juby deposit uh, is a well-known deposit uh in the abitibi there's uh, uh of course every major uh Every major uh, mining company has a, a mine or a deposit. And so I think we're surrounded by some of the biggest names in the industry. Infrastructure is all in place. Plan there, of course, like I said, is to, to get some drilling, build on that discovery hole, get to a resource definition, and uh, hopefully um, we get some uh, love from the markets finally. That's, that's in Quebec? It's actually in Ontario, not too far from the Quebec. Okay, yeah, well, the reason Quebec's so exciting is because of the super flow through, right? Yes, yes, yes. Our project's just actually not too far from the Quebec border. I think it's less than an hour's drive. Okay, but, but you would be drilling in Ontario? Yes. Okay. Now, Saf, I also heard uh, just 
uh, meeting you for the first time. Uh, well, we've, 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 we were introduced once at a conference, but first time we've actually had a chance to sit down and chat. And uh, someone was telling me that you've got a, a, a pretty good background uh, with previous names. Uh, what can you tell us about your big, uh, your, your big win? Yeah, you know, I was fortunate when I left uh, the banking industry and I got my first foray into the natural resource industry. I got involved with a pretty good group of, uh, uh, I guess, market executives, and they had just launched a uh, geothermal company. U.S. Geothermal Inc. was the name of the company. We grew that from basically a half a dozen uh, um, abandoned old U.S. Department of Energy uh, production and reinjection wells. It was actually the site of the world, uh, North America's first binary cycle geothermal plant. We acquired it. We had a $2 million market cap. Within a decade, geothermal takes a long time to develop. It took seven years to uh, uh, construct, build our first geothermal power plant. But we took that from about a $2 million market cap at its peak to about 350 million US. By the time the company was sold to the world's largest geothermal producer, we were doing in excess of 100 million in annual revenues. Wow. We had 15 analysts covering the stock. We had, you know, the who's who of all the large cap banks either were investors or had analyst coverage. So it was some pretty exciting times. And now you're looking to do it again with two, two names, iMetal and QuestCorp. Always looking, always looking for the next big win. And I think we have it with two big potential company making projects, both in iMetal Resources and in QuestCorp. All right, well, Saf, thanks very much for hopping on here. It's a pleasure uh, getting to chat on camera for the first time, and let's continue to chat as you guys uh, roll out on your, on your strategy. Looking forward to it, Steve. Thanks again. Thanks.